Okay, so this was one of my first and very early on engagements. And uh, going up against a Phantasm, he's pretty fast. I know I could break him when he was in close, but uh, I th think he uh, er realizes early on he's in trouble, so he's trying to pull some range. I noticed that when he makes that turn, he don't have any Celestials, and so this is going to be my chance to get him. So I try to heat and uh, do the best I can to, to uh, get the kill. I'm playing it a bit safer here than I think I need to be from what I've learned, you know, now. But um, I am circling back in, starting to spool on the, sp on the phone. And in comes a Hugin. So I decided to see if I could take him, and then I, he starts getting chunked pretty quick. So I'm like, all right, this guy's not a threat. I just kind of start going in uh, aggressively at that point and uh, finish these two guys off. Okay, so in this fight, as you can see, they're double Hugin, because, you know, why not? They want to uh, make sure they get me, lock me down. So, uh, I start making range. Uh, also, to note, this time I'm not running a Scepter as my scout, I'm running a Stabber. I wanted a little more um, alt capability, so I went between a mix uh, throughout these clips of running either Damps or TDs or something like that to try to give me... Um, a little extra edge while taking some of these engagements, you know. And some of them he just burns off and does nothing, and some of them he actually does help me mitigate some uh, applied DPS to me, but whether it's damps or TDs or whatever it is. So you can see there, I, I made pretty quick work of the Hugin. Uh, the rest of them were getting close. So I was worried that they might point me and finish me off there while being under webs from that second Hugin, but I immediately go back. Um, I got one Hugin down. I got one more to deal with, and then. Um, I can try to work the grid and they're so far out that I'm safely believe I can slide back in and restart this fight as you can see there so the closest thing is the track I start spawning on him as soon as I get in Um, he starts RTCing me, so I don't know if he thought he had a tracking computer on or what the case was, but he does this a couple times. I'm not sure what was going on there. Maybe um, he just had the wrong module, and but hey, I'll take it. <laughs> As you can see, the the other Hugin comes in, and uh, and I swap over to him. And uh, I know once I got him pretty much down uh, the rest of the the ships are all pretty much uh, cruiser battle cruiser I'll be able to control the grid fairly effectively
Okay, so in this clip, it's a little bit different. You can see that we got a fleet that jumped in uh, on us. And uh, I have my trusty bell ringing stabber there that that uh, was getting them to come in. And um, actually with the Ishtar buddy as well. So he's set up to um, kind of support me uh, and be uh, ranged uh, DPS as well. He has like some moss and I think they're getting shot right there. So we're pulling them and he'll move over to sentries and just back up my targets. And it's worth a note that I'm, I'm playing a little bit cautious. These ships are, are pretty much paper thin. I think I have like 12k effective EHP in armor only, no damage control or anything like that. So if I could, if they could apply to me, um, I'm in pretty much trouble fairly quickly. So I'm trying to play it a little bit safe uh, at the moment. But we're just slowly kind of working through these guys and uh Um the uh Ishtar, I think they're starting to outrange his his sentries, so at this point I'm pretty sure he's scooping them and trying to redeploy. Yeah, you can see he's going over there, we're looking at his drones. So he's scooping his drones, he's gonna try to redeploy at a closer spot because he's no longer being effective and I'm trying to get in a little bit tighter maybe get on um, closer damage because uh, Ferox Navy is pretty tanky Okay, so the Ferox got out. I mean, that's the bad part about having no point in your group, but you got to kind of choose on how close you want to be to some of these targets. And the closer you are, the little more um, that you're going to fill it on that tank, you know. So I'm trying to pick targets based off of guys that are in the back at this point, just based off that. You know, you want to get the ones in the back before they get out and try to knock them down. So we're pretty much working. I'm being fairly uh, aggressive at this point. I want to get in there and I want to get these kills. Uh, and then I notice that big drone ball coming at me. And you can see how they're just like chunking me really hard. And most of those are like light drones. But there's a lot of them. And like I said, it's a fairly squishy ship. So I have to start peeling. I'm trying to apply my damage as best I can. But uh, at this point I'm in trouble. And I need to make some range and, and start trying to uh, stabilize. Okay, so I stabilized, but a lot of those guys got out of the bubble um, based off of that, that drone swarm, you know. Uh, so we come back in, and there's some guys that just landed uh, near the beacon. So that's going to be our new primaries one. It's a, a nice spot for the sentries, which you can see are just right here, or he redeployed them. And uh, two, they're still in the bubble, so we could actually get the confirmed uh, kills. Right here, I'm just trying to keep positioning. There's no reason for me to go after the guys that are on the edge of the bubble there because they're kind of just balled up and in a safe spot. I'm trying to finish off 
the guys that are in the bubble the best I can. And you'll see, like when I was talking about cap being an issue, how low my cap is getting here. So you can't perma run that rep, um, and cap can be tricky, even with like the drugs and implants and stuff like that. So you have to be kind of careful. A uh, Hugin comes in, and um, good thing we're running uh, kinetic sentry, uh, so he's getting chunked really quick, and. Um, I go in to, to make sure we finish the kill because uh, I think he started getting some misses there towards the end. At this point, the reinforcements have pretty much left and we're just doing some last minute cleanup. Uh, this is a pretty scary group. So the Ikit comes in, he's pretty much my <laughs> bigger brother with much better tank and damage and everything else. So uh, I'm kind of worried if he starts to get spooled on me. I am pulling to make it range, trying to see uh, what my options are. And I noticed that uh, I think he's like a 10 MN fit. So I uh, go back into engage and start spooling on the Tengu since his tank seemed fairly solid. I don't know if he had any damage mods or if his tank was just that good, but um, he was too tanky, so I swap off him, and I believe I can just outrange him, start spawning on that Tengu, which tries to pull back into the blob. Uh, I just circle in, um, and uh, at this point, I, I believe I can finish him off, and I'll eat some damage, it's worth it. Uh, he goes down. And uh, I start trying to get rid of the car cows. I figure the rapids, they'll apply to me really well. And like I said, on paper then, if I get two of those on me, that could be uh, pretty much the end of me. So I want to clear some of these T2 drones and I want to clear some of that car cow DPS if I can. Uh, much like the other fight, I'm trying to get the things that are in the bubbles, and I'm also working on the backside here. There's no warp outs or whatever, so at this point, if I die, I die. But I'm trying to pull them more so into the bubble, uh, where they also have no warp outs, and uh, allow me to get these kills. You see my tank, <laughs> there's even not that much on me, it's already being stressed. And uh, my stabber, I just swapped that over to a scythe fleet, which uh, after losing enough of them, just, I figured it, uh, my buddy came up with the fit and it's a lot more solid and about the same price, so why not? So I confirmed the kill there. Uh, that ick is starting to spoil me though, so I know that's going to hurt uh, really fast and I'm trying to outrange him. See I do that, circle back, and again I'm trying to pull him back towards me the best I can uh, to this backside.
Okay, so another car got off the grid. I'm pretty comfortable now that I, I believe I have pretty good control of the grid, minus the ticket that keeps ramming me. But, um, not too scared of the harb. I think I can sig him and uh, just start trying to go in more aggressively to see if I can finish anything else off. They pretty much know it's done and, and we're bound. clip I'm uh, I saved you guys the heartache of watching us grind this guy down up to this point but pretty much we got four stars running around a support gang ends up showing up uh, shortly here Buddy, go down but not just let it go let it go not before he dies so we're running on the guitar double sight fleet issues double vet max and we have some e war so big damage, baby. Big damage. Here we go. He's not able to lock us at that range, so we're just out range. One more, one more, one more. Get ready, get the yeah. thing, get the thing, get the And thing. he was a fairly nice blink fit. So that will end my clips for today. I hope you enjoyed so. it. And here comes the fitting and explanation after. Okay, so the ship I decided to use for the meta shift, um, small gang art of escalation, was the Vedmac. And uh, I decided to use this fit that's fairly basic um, but effective, and pretty much the use of it was going to be in the ESS. As you can see, I don't have any tack or anything like that. Where we can kind of rely on them self-tackling, hopefully, and uh, getting some kills. So this is pretty close to the finalized fit. Um, I went through a couple different versions, quite a few different versions, but you can see I got two empty high slots here. These had um, or will have whatever kind of fits after it's done. Uh, targeting system for extra lock targets, obviously a T2 gun, 100 MN because we're working in the... ESS battery because caps really intensive and speaking of the battery you can see here uh, it's just a medium armor rubber 2 for the length of the engagement most likely so there's going to be an escalation and I can't um, afford to need to reload that um, and the cap here you can see only lasts 4 minutes 14 seconds um, with with that heated so cap was definitely an issue I found out after I started running um, this fit uh, so what I ended up doing initially I was trying to roll the AB because it's cheap but since it's a battleship size AB when you go to roll it it's uh, big uh, chances to get like negative effects on like something that just makes it too hard to fit since it's a battleship size AB to save cap there so that ended up being a waste pretty much but where I did try to save the cap was pretty much on my medium armor repper so even if it repped a little bit less but I got a decent roll that was cap based and it was close enough to the T2 I pretty much just ran that so maybe not the best but um, cap wise it would help me stabilize and kind of run that number out farther uh, than I ran that and obviously I, I rolled they're only T2 and they're fairly cheap so a decade roll you can roll quite a few of them and normally I would end up with something fairly decent um, the, uh, iconic, uh, actually we'll go back up here, the tracking computers for the optimal range, as you can see here, Messon's doing 87, now, um, I was running implants, and, uh, a little bit of speed, a little bit of agility, again, cap, uh, being a big issue, so, I mean, these are all fairly cheap, I think I was getting the full set for under 25 mil. And since I was running this um, fairly aggressively, I wanted to, uh, you know, make sure that that um, I could do so without breaking the bank. So, I mean, overall, you can see here it's 200 mil. Once I got like ammo, drugs, and everything, implants, I think I was like a little over 300 mil to fit everything out.
Um, and then the sharpshooter. This was initially, I want to say, a 902 maybe, but 903s are pretty much cheap, so I just ended up going for that. And then the boosters. Um, synth Mind Flood, because like I said, cap's an issue. And the number for uh, 4 minutes and 14 seconds there on the cap is actually with that um, synth. And without that, you're even less. So yeah, you need the synth uh, mind uh, improved front ticks for the extra range. Now, I started out with standard initially, but I just found out um, the chances of breaking spool are not worth it. And lots of times you're like losing a kill on a target within the last couple kilometers. So I've been going for uh, improved on that, and then uh, these um, event boosters. One of them's turret uh, range and damage. This uh, turret booster three here. Uh, initially, I was doing uh, number twos, which were cheaper and the price was much better. But as I got more comfortable running the fit and running it multiple times, my survivability and just kind of what I needed and and stuff like that, or what I. I can engage in, I pretty much almost engage in anything, but um, I just ended up going uh, for the higher the higher one there. Uh, so yeah, so back up here, we did the tracking computers, so you can see the reason for that. Like I said, 87, and if I go to um, Mystic, we're at uh, 73. And then um, at times, I would do Baryon for a little bit better tracking. If you needed to, you could also do Tetron. And again, still 34 kilometers. So if somebody was coming in tight, you still needed tracking. 34 kilometers is still pretty good. And heated, you're doing um, fully spooled, decent damage. So you can see here, 850. Um, let me see here. We'll go back up to the Mystic. Mystic was 773. And Mason uh, 618, and this is without the drone damage, by the way. Uh, a lot of the engagements, like it seemed like they're just automatically trying to shoot your drone, so I kind of save that for like finish them off at the end and just that little extra DPS. Um, also, um, dealing with Hugans that were showing up, so hence the Vespas. I tried infiltrators to offset any armor uh, reactives, but Vespas just kind of seem like. Um, better use since I was having to peel off Hugans a lot of times. And then I did roll the radiation um, sinks as well with uh, Decayed. So between rolling the um, armor wrapper and the radiation sinks, fitting started to become an issue. So that's why these two high slots went empty. It was like that was the most important thing to do. And then I still have whatever I have left after I put those rolled items on and get them as effective as I can. And then maybe put like a core probe launcher. One of them I had like a remote, a coaxial um, remote rep just for repping my drones after the engagement and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty much covered everything. Thanks for watching.